Each man carries between 50 to 70 kilo loads back up the volcano side. At the same time, other workers continue to toil near the 36 million cubic meter acid lake, breaking up chunks of sulfur from makeshift canals, which they'd previously made. Each carrier must find a way to balance his load in order to make it out of the crater. For the last 15 years, 200 miners have taken turns gathering sulfur at Kawa Ijen. Nine tons of sulfur are extracted daily from the heart of the volcano, which occasionally comes to life and spews acid 600 meters into the air. Miners walk as quickly as they can back to their base, where the sulfur will be weighed. Sulfur is weighed at this former scientific base, as the miners whose lives will be shortened by this grueling work look on. The sulfur, which allows them to earn a living, ironically kills them all a bit faster. They'll deliver their loads into the Banju Bangui Valley, earning only a pittance for their labor. In this same valley, another grueling job allows a small population to eke out a living. The method of collecting salt from the marshes hasn't changed in centuries. The salt is spread out to dry under the beating equatorial sun, then later gathered in a pile with traditional rakes. This is the first step to salt production.
The salt crystals are then transported, as was the sulfur, in baskets, knowingly balanced across the shoulders. The valuable white gold will mainly be used to preserve meat and fish. On the coast, skilled carpenters build strange bulbous boats. An important means of commercial transportation between Java and Sumatra, these various sized craft, built primarily of teak, transport merchandise between Jakarta and Ujum Padang. Once they are waterproofed, these audaciously shaped traditional craft are set afloat. All sails hoisted, they perform an important function for the economy of the Indonesian archipelago.